meeting on public works and transportation will come to order. Take the, uh, clerk, take the roll, please. Councilor Kadeem? Here. Councilor Pelletier? Here. Chair Dion? Here. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Do we have any citizens? Do we have any citizens input? Number two, order for curb removal, 102 Laurel Street, referred on 61422. Councilor Pelletier. There are any objections here tonight? Yeah. Are there any opponents to the curb cut at 102 Laurel Street? Are there any proponents? Excuse me, if you can come sit right here at the table. State your name and address for the record, please. My name is Mayara Pina. Uh, I live on 102 Lower Street. My driveway is right in front of a uh, um, bus stop. And we are trying to cut on Ethnic Street, and that's the reason why for the curb cut, because I don't have enough space to put a car in the situation, in the situation today, which I tried to back up on my driveway, the bus came, she saw me with the lights on to back up, and she didn't stop. She stopped right on my side, but she didn't let me park in. So it's very hard for me to, to even park on my driveway in front of a bus stop, and that's the reason why we want to cut, cut the curb, curb. So if you had the curb cut on Laurel Street, would you not use the Etna Street side anymore, or would you be using both? No. Go ahead. My, my, my backyard, it's on Ethnic Street. Mm -hmm. I cannot by any meaning go into my backyard through Lower Street. And I have, I have cars sometimes, I, I can't even access my backyard through Lower Street. And that's the reason why we want to put a curb cut in there. Not the matter of just be parking over there every day, but at least to get access into my, my, my yard. Okay, Council Pelletier. Well, I went up there today, you wasn't home. I rang the bell, nobody there. But anyway, just I'm to sorry. let you know, once the bus goes by and he's in front of your driveway, he can't back up anyway. They're not allowed to back up, first of all. But uh, what you got on Etna Street, it's, I think, a perfect place for it. I opened the fence, I peeked in the yard. You got a big driveway there. And to me, uh, there's no houses on that side. It's all businesses. And when I go by there, there's not that many the park in the street anyway. So uh, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't give it to her. It would make it much easier when the buses are running. And I guess you could still use uh, Laurel Street if you have to weekends and everything else. Uh, how many cars can you put in the backyard? About six? About six, yeah. Yeah. About six. I do have, I do have a business which uh, it's a construction business. And most of the time I use I, I already have a gate in there. Yes, yeah. the, matter, the matter that I cannot uh, say no parking in here, like if you went over there two, two days ago for the past two weeks, it has been a trailer over there that, that wasn't even registered. He was using the back of my van to, to put the plates because he didn't have his stickers on his trailer, but he was blocking my gate. So I couldn't ask him yeah. to move because no. I, I cannot put a no parking here because I don't have a, a car have a yeah. in there. And I couldn't go into my yard to take it off the construction stuff or anything like that. It's not that I'm going to be using to go back and forth every day, but well, I, I would like to have. Well, to me, it makes sense to have it anyway. So I don't know if there's anybody opposed to it, but uh, I think it makes sense. So I yield for now. Can we ask Mrs. Ferrara to join us also? Um, so you had a trailer parked on the street in front of your house? 
That, that's on the curb cut that I need. That's what I put the gate. But okay. Well, I, I, I guess my point is, if I'm not mistaken, trailers aren't supposed to be parked on the street overnight? That's not a trailer. That's a camping trailer. So oh, a it's, camping yeah, trailer. Yeah, a camping trailer. I apologize for missing Oh, okay. All right. Study. Thanks. Councilor Kadim? I was going to ask a question, but I think I got the answer already. Um, so I was going to ask if we do you, would you still look for a curb cut uh, if we if we remove the or move the bus stop? I won't be able to go to my yard anyways. So you, regardless, if, we move, if the need, bus stop yes. gets moved, you would still yes. want the curb cut. Okay. All right, I yield. Mrs. Ferrero. Well, <clears throat> Council Dean just um, spoke what I was going to say. That bus stop should not be there. Um, I think that when this driveway was done, you, the, the curb cut here, it either got moved or whatever, that bus stop should go closer to the corner. So I'm going to check the ordinance um, of this location and see what happened here because a bus stop should not be that close to a driveway because if they're picking up passengers or whatever, it blocks the whole driveway. So I'll definitely look into that. And if it has to be moved, we'll move it. Okay. So whether she would get the curb cut or not, this is still something I'm you would still pursue? I'm going to look into it, definitely. Okay, thank you. So with that, I will take a motion. Thank motion you. to grant permission Second. for the 14 feet on Etna Street. We had a uh, motion by Council Peltier. Second, Second. Council Kadim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. You're all set. Number three it was a resolution. Administrator of Community Utilities be invited to Committee on Public Works and Transportation meeting to discuss solutions to the flooding issues on Anderson Street. Um, tabled 9-14-21. Motion to take it off the table. Second. Uh, motion, Council Pelletier. Second, Council Kadim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Is item four the same? It seems to be. Um, there were two resolutions written by two different people, but yes, they're essentially the same. So uh, can I make a motion to take item four together? Second. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll lift, motion lifts, well, I'll, I'll take them together first. So. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that passes. Motion lift from the table. Second. Motion to lift made by Council Kadim, seconded by Council Pelletier. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Now, I know the last time that we were here, there was a discussion, and Mr. Furlan was supposed to walk the brook behind Anderson Street to see, I guess, how that, what kind of effect that has, if there could be any uh, help from. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <clears throat> so that was the last time that I was here. Uh, the council asked me to walk uh, what's known as Sucker Brook. Uh, so uh, I walked Sucker Brook pretty much from the Stafford Road, uh, where it comes underneath the Stafford Road comes down, crosses Lark Street, uh, continues down behind uh, Anderson Street, uh, it's Nightingale and Robbins, where those dead end at. It continues all through there. Uh, it's a pretty defined channel through that whole entire way. Uh, pretty prickery to get through and get to the actual channel, but it is a pretty uh, defined channel through that whole entire area. The one spot where it starts to <coughs> disperse off very well is further down next to the uh, 994 Jefferson Street complex. Um, so that's where it starts to go into that wetland. If you want, I can give you a little overview of the watershed. I didn't do any PowerPoints tonight, because I know mm -hmm. sometimes you like them, sometimes you don't. But I figured I'd stick with my boards tonight, and uh, then we can uh, get further in depth if you want. But uh, essentially, so this is all Fall River up in this area, uh, Tiverton down in this area over here. Uh, Sucker Brook. So this is Stafford Pond underneath this purple area. Sucker Brook essentially comes from Stafford Pond. Uh, there's the dam on Stafford Pond, comes down through this area, and then out into South Watuffa Pond. Excuse me, where's Anderson Street in relation to this? So Anderson Street is right over in this area. Okay, right in the thick of it. Yep, exactly. So right where everything started to come down into that area. So there's actually two uh, primary watersheds that feed down there. You have the Stafford Pond watershed uh, and the discharge that comes off the dam at Stafford Pond, as well as this whole entire uh, Sucker Brook watershed area. Uh, so this whole entire mapping was just done. We defined all of these different drainage areas that go into South Watuffa Pond. 
when we were just doing the South Watopa Pond study. Um, so this maps out what those drainage areas are and what the contributing areas are. Um, as I flip to this, this was one of the outcomes actually of that uh, blue water project that we did for South Watopa Pond. Um, as you know, South Watopa Pond has an algae issue. We've been looking at that over recent years. Uh, we were able to get a grant to start to do some preliminary studies. Uh, and we kind of looked at all the different watersheds that fed down into it and what the areas are, how we can benefit South Watopa Pond. But an offshoot of that was also potentially how we could benefit some flooding areas that come down into South Watopa Pond. This whole entire rendition was, uh, was done up as a potential uh, solution um, to get nutrients and phosphates out of the water that run through Sucker Brook. So Sucker Brook, so Stafford Pond is way back here. Uh, over here is South Watopa Pond. Uh, this is Atlanta's Charter School right in this area. Uh, and then Stafford Road is actually just off the map over here. Uh, 50 Anderson Street is this property right here. So again, Sucker Brook, defined channel, comes down under Stafford Road, uh, comes through, I believe this is Lark Street. Um, that comes through here, uh, and then continues down, I said, like I said, in the fine channel through this area over here. Uh, the other large contributing area that we have, too, that comes down into this general area um, is from the south. So uh, as far back as uh, Hancock Street, there's a, there's a channel that comes this way and comes into this area to join Sucker Brook uh, to head over into into South Watopa Pond. Uh, through our integrated plan that we did back in 2015, uh, some of the improvements uh, in this area that we noted was to raise Dickinson Street and increase the covenant size underneath Dickinson Street. That was done when Atlanta's Charter School uh, built their school. That was done by the school. Uh, Spencer Street enlarged the culvert under there. Uh, last year, in uh, September 2nd of 2001, <coughs> We had a heavy rainstorm that actually washed that culvert out on uh, Spencer Street, and we went in, did an emergency repair, and lodged that culvert at that time. So this whole entire, what this is showing you here, um, is a project that we identified uh, during the Blue Water Project. It takes and it revitalizes all of this wetland. That, so that wetland right now, if you've been down by the 994 Jefferson Street complex, so off to the right after you make that turn, there's a lot of uh, invasive species in there, plants and stuff, a lot of sediment buildup that, that's in that whole entire wetland area uh, that isn't conducive to help uh, either the flow or the water quality in South Watonga Pond. I imagine it doesn't help with drainage either. Correct, exactly. So all that sediment gets built up in that area. The sediment's there. It doesn't allow the water to come in, use it as a floodplain, and then allow it to drain out. Um, so what we're looking at is to you know, turn this area into more of a wetland floodplain area to be used for storage as it discharges out. Um, the benefits that we get, again, is phosphorus and nitrogen removal. Um, so this was done through the uh, South Watopa project. Uh, we do currently have an MVP grant, uh, which we're going to be working on permitting and design of this project, along with three other projects in relation to South Watopa. Uh, that permitting design phase be about a year and a half. Uh, so the MVP program actually provided us the funding. Uh, the council provided with the Bristol County APA funds provided us the match for that uh, for that project. And I was just made aware that uh, Bristol County did approve the use of those funds. Right. So, um, so we'll be starting the design within this area. Uh, as to you know, Anderson, Anderson Street, Endicott comes down. Anderson runs down this way. That property. Uh, it, 50 Anderson Street is a very, very low property. Uh, it's actually within the FEMA flood maps, uh, the, the, almost the entire property. Um, so, you know, that is kind of a low point in that area. So what happens is when you get a heavy rainstorm, again, the water comes down through Sucker Brook, uses every area that it can as a floodplain, and that property uh, just so happens to be one. You know, I know Mr. Bowell, the resident of that property, has made uh, you know, he's uh, built a garage, uh, a detached garage that's higher in elevation. I believe he, he just told me that he finished closing off his garage that went into the house uh, to block any water from uh, entering the garage because that was primarily where he had the flow from. 
You know, the other issue that we always have, uh, and Mr. Bell always talks to me about it, uh, in the winter is you plow, trucks go down, plow the snow. Uh, I make sure that the sewer department goes out there now to, uh, you know, as we're doing catch basins and stuff, that's one of their spots that they stop to make sure that the end of the street's clear. So that's kind of uh, a broad overview where we are. For funding for this project, um, this was identified as potentially a five to seven million dollar project. Um, I'm hoping that potentially uh, floodplain management uh, through FEMA or hazard mitigation grant programs through FEMA may be a future option for permit, uh, for construction. Um, so again, we're looking at this project. Uh, there is a current uh, a current release out for those grant applications. We're not going to be far enough along with this project to make this one, but they are coming out with another round really soon. So, uh, you know, this is one project we're going to keep moving forward. Again, and that's uh, should, you know, that's planning to improve the whole entire watershed as it comes down. Council Pelletier? Uh, you know, I've just been kicking around for a while. And Innocent Street, and they get the complaints that are over always flooding, and we had mentioned maybe we could buy the property, but I don't know if that was an option or not. But, you know, the administration and you, are you trying to get the money for it, but where does the administration fit with this? Uh, you got that, Anderson, you got the Stafford Square, and you got uh, Grinnell Street in Jefferson. So, I mean, they're just sitting there. They get flooded all the time. I mean, how long before we addressed it? The guy from Anderson Street must have been here three, four times, and you're still not getting anywhere, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think Mr. Barlow's probably been uh, very vocal about the flooding issue there since 2010 floods. With 210. Were we in 2000 what? 22. 22. Oh. <laughs> yes, it has been, it has been uh, some time. Um, but again, you know, um, as you know, in our department for funding, we're always trying to balance uh, the affordability uh, and being able to fund and, and do these projects. Um, back in 2017, uh, you know, we finished up with uh, some CSO work. Uh, then we went into a separate authorization in 2017, which, it, which laid out uh, a number of projects that were priority at that time. Um, and that's the projects that we're currently moving forward on. You know, these projects, again, aren't forgotten, but again, it's a balancing of the affordability for the ratepayers um, and the uh, ability to be able to do these projects and fund these projects. So, you know, again, one of the things that I'm, uh, that, I, you know, um, I think grants are, are a great thing, especially in Fall River, where uh, usually at the top tier, um, due to our uh, economic status within the city, um, but it, it does take time, without a doubt. Well, I just think it takes too much time, especially with the people waiting. Now, when they allow, like, Jefferson Street down there to build, I mean, why did they even let them build that? They know there's going to be a problem. Same thing on, on Anderson Street. They must have knew it was going to be a problem. Yeah, you know. And then it becomes our problem, your problem, and the money problem, and the city's problem. I mean, you know, it's just not right. They should be... Uh, watch out where they get the permits to build and uh, signing off to make sure these places won't get flooded, you know? Yeah. Even around Coupon, we had trouble with that too as well. And, and uh, you know, we got fixed a little bit, a little bit. We went there several times to square it away. It seems to be fairly squared away now they got a new street. But it's one thing after another. Where's the money come? But I think the department heads that should go down, check it out. And, and if it's not right to build, you don't build. With that, I yield. The city engineer is here. I'd like to have him also join us at the table. Yes. Council Kadim. Thank you. So just in your presentation, so the the work that's going to be done using the MVP grant. Yes. Are the engineers saying that once that's fixed, that's going to minimize the flooding on Anderson Street, or it'll better it'll benefit the Anderson Street area? Is that going to fix you know every rainstorm that's there? Probably not, but. Uh, the idea is that it'll add additional flood pit plane capacity downstream from where Anderson is uh, to allow that area to fill up with water rather than upstream uh, Anderson Street. Okay. And my, my other question is, and I, I know it's somewhat not really aligned with the, the conversation that we're having, but the, um, 
So the, the areas that you've got highlighted, so the mills mm -hmm. in that area, were they ever dumping any any of their wastewater into those systems? So I'm just curious to see if there's any contamination in there. <coughs> you know, uh, the mills that are down in that area, that's an old bleachery. Um, you know, back in the 1800s when there was no sewer system mm -hmm. in the city, I would imagine that there was some type of discharges. That is something that we're going to have to look at for what contaminants are in that area and through the design process that will be identified. Okay. And that's why there's kind of a big swing on the construction cost. All right. And the only, the only reason I asked was because obviously with the Brownfield grants uh, that's available through you know, EPA, I, I don't know if we could, could leverage that and then maybe potentially do some additional design work or uh, improvements in that area. Yeah, definitely. So, okay. I yield. Mr. Aguiar. Great. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Dan Aguiar. I'm the city engineer. Um, I was asked to come this evening, I think just for item number six, but they're all kind of in the same general realm. So if I could add this, I heard you know, Councilor Pelletier ask a question about how things get permitted over time and, and what happens as we you know progress through time. I've been here since January. Um, Paul has been here much longer and has been dealing with these situations. I think it's pretty well known worldwide the increase in storm events. So when we have drainage systems that are designed for a certain rainfall intensity, and by that I mean a certain amount of inches over a certain period of time. It's been well documented around the 2010-ish time when we had the real big rainstorm with the Mount Hope, the, the rainfall intensities that have been incurring, we don't get an inch of rain today, an inch of rain tomorrow, an inch of rain Thursday, we're getting four inches of rain in three hours. Storms like that, that drainage systems are not designed for. These antiquated drainage systems, as well as the natural drainage systems like, like a brook. So the drainage situation that everyone is seeing here, it's not specific to the city of Fall River, it's to the world, because the rainfall patterns and how things get designed are done much differently under current standards for site plan review and different types of building permitting processes, the, the committee uh, and the council has put together site plan review and those types of things to take a closer look at this stuff when things get constructed. So over time, as things get built, people create more impervious surfaces and more driveways to park, bigger houses. That, that leaves less land for water to be absorbed into the ground. Now, this situation where we have a downstream flooding area, which is the wetland that, that Mr. Furlan was talking about, yes, as that fills up with sediment, it's like if you take a bathtub and you fill the bottom four inches with sand and you turn your faucet on, that, that tub will now hold less water than it would when it's empty. So as all of this water comes out of the faucet, which is, let's say, Sucker Brook is the faucet, feeding into this bathtub of, of the down gradient wetland, when you're starting with a situation where the bottom of that bathtub is already a quarter of the way full, that's less water to hit the tub. So once you wanted to put that same amount of water or more because of the increase in rain, once you hit the top of the tub, the water is going to overflow. It's going to overflow the banks of Sucker Brook. It's going to overflow any street or catch basin. So moving forward, we do need to upgrade, upgrade all the stormwater management systems that we have you know, in our streets. But that comes at a great cost, as, as Paul well knows. Um, I've looked at the numbers and some of the estimates that he's had by different consultants. And, and these are estimates that were put together quite a few years ago. We may find that they're even drastically more increased. So I think the problem is, is well noted, and everyone is well aware of it. It's just a matter of, like everything else, how do we fund it to get, to get these situations resolved? This property on Anderson Street is very particular, where I think Mr. Barlow bought the property around 2010. I think it was only built maybe 10 years before that, I believe. Um, this property is in a flood hazard zone on a FEMA map. It's in an A zone. Not just outside of it, not, you know, it's, it's, it's in a floodplain associated with Sucker Brook. On top of that, when the original owner built the home before Mr. Barlow, if you get down there, you'll see that the garage doors and the driveway are below Anderson Street. So if the house was built properly back whenever it was built, and went through maybe a site plan review or things like we do now, the house probably would have been raised three feet to what it is now, and we wouldn't be having this issue. So it, it's horrible to say that we have an existing condition that in order to fix it, it takes something as grand as what Paul is proposing to fix that problem. It may seem minor that it's only that it's one house, but it's one house, and we have to try and do what we can to, to resolve that. Mr. Barlow has taken steps on his own 
to close off his garage doors to stop that flooding from happening and, and build another garage. But really to fix that, there, there is funding that, that we need to go seek. And, and I can tell you, just being here in a short period of time, and you all know, Paul is the best at going out and finding millions of dollars to do improvements in the city streets. Um, but those projects get prioritized and, and money can only be spent you know, at one to finish it. You can't sprinkle it, because until the project's completed, you don't get the solution that you need. So you can't take 100 million and put 10, 10, 10, you haven't resolved any problem. So it has to go one at a time. That's all. I respect your explanation, and um, I mean no disrespect, I, but I do feel I have to bring up the fact, and I know that Councilor uh, Pelletier was alluding to this sort of thing. Uh, we do have a neighborhood that was built in an area where they actually drained a pond and then built the houses. One of the houses sank seven inches or nine inches. Um, so where site plan review was for that? There was not. questionable. It came in just after that, as a result of that. As a result of that. And, and I, as you know, for 28 years, I worked in the private sector. Mm -hmm. I would never do a job in that subdivision because of the problems that I've known that have taken place. We're actually in the process now of making some big changes and trying to create some resolutions to the drainage issues down there. Um, but yes, that was, I'll, I'll call it a travesty. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why site plan review you know, came into being. Mm -hmm. that, that, that was the driving force was drainage. People didn't pay attention to drainage 20 or 30 years ago. I did, because it's what I did for a living, but um, most places did not. So I, I give you know, the council credit for coming up with and passing the site plan review ordinance because that has made drastic improvement. Um, Is in, there anything else that we could do to help to move this even further forward um, to uh, avoid pro other problems in the future? Money. That's, it, it really just comes down to money. It, it really does. They're all, if it was a problem, if the worst thing for me to come and say it's a problem that we can't fix, that, that's bad mm -hmm. and you know, that's fearful. This is not a problem like that. Water flows downhill. So as long as you have somewhere for it to flow to, that's where it's going to go. Then it will work. Mm -hmm. But it costs money to get it to flow downhill sometimes. Now, from what I understand, Paul and I discussed, and, and he, ta he talked a little bit about it. He walked that in Tucker, mm -hmm. entire brook, and there were no obstructions. So the only place that the backup can occur, so it comes down through the stream and then hits this big wetland, which is the bathtub that we were talking about. So really, the only thing that we can do is fix the bathtub, and then potentially what connects the bathtub to the Watupa Pond, which I think the, the, the project that Paul has initiated will resolve. So between the grant and the funding that you received from the council, which I'm so happy my fellow councilors uh, approved the funding, yep. um, how much of an effect do you believe that will have on that area? So again, it, it, it's a process that we need to go through. This was the first step, getting a general idea, you know, 90,000 foot view of what it's going to look like. Next, we're going to get, you know, <clears throat> more design. So we're going to get into surveying, we're going to get into borings, we're going to get into soil sampling, and a little bit more of, uh, you know, H&H &H hydraulic study to see, you know, how every, all the pieces will fit together. Um, so that's the step that we're on right now. Um, once we've done that step, we'll have a better idea of what the actual overall project would be, what the overall cost is going to be at that time, that'll allow us to continue, continue moving forward. You know, again, it's, it's, it's a process for the design process. Um, you know, design process on something like this can, can take some time, especially uh, right now. Um, a lot of design engineers are uh, very, very busy with all the federal funding that's out there. And then my last question would be, is this a situation or would be totally absurd? Um, that some type of retaining wall could could help the situation? Well, in an A zone, like, like we're dealing with here, the only thing that you could do is, you know, let's look at New Orleans, for instance, and you build a dike mm -hmm. around an entire property. Um, you still have to get into this property. Right. So the water will, will seek its way around. So if, mm -hmm. if you built a wall along the back of the property, it's probably just going to wrap around the mm -hmm. front into Anderson and come in, in through the front. Um, I, I think Mr. Barlow has done as much filling as he can around the house where he has a swimming pool and he's raised the grade up enough, I think, to, to help the situation the best that he can. Really, the, the quickest and cheapest solution, and by no means am I saying that this is, should be an option, 
would be to raise the house and to raise the mm -hmm. land. But that's not something that, that, that we can put on the homeowner. I understand that completely. But if you were to now try and build this house in an A zone, they would make you raise this house approximately three or four feet so, so that this does not happen. Council Kadeem? Yeah, so I was just going to ask the question with regards to Whitefield Street, which is the uh, development you were talking about. So that, that predated the site review. So what about as built? So there was no no Nothing. as built plans that were submitted because no. it was no site review. Right. It was all prior to that. And because it was technically not a subdivision, <coughs> it wasn't a definitive subdivision, Linwood and Whitefield mm -hmm. were existing ways. Mm -hmm. So they, they came in and constructed it to a standard adequate enough to provide access to the homes, and they're considered what is called an A&R subdivision, the Form A subdivision, where they just create the box and then go get a building permit. Uh, the city has taken great extents to go in and make drainage improvements. I know the roads were just finished paved, um, and there is now the opportunity with another landowner to the north um, to try and incorporate some dramatic drainage improvement utilizing his properties to help alleviate the downstream drain or the upgradient drainage systems through Linwood and Whitefield as well. So, so uh, in, in terms of the zoning ordinances, are there any changes or do you feel comfortable with what's currently in our ordinances to, to for get For zoning or for site plan review? Sites, uh, both, planning and... and um, zoning is, I mean, zoning is fairly antiquated. You know, it's yeah. been around for a long time, so there, there are some changes to be made. I was brought in to look at some of those things, and once the reorganization went through, I would be in a position to help move that along, which, thank mm -hmm. you for, for passing that so we can start to do that work. I've done some of it behind the scenes already. Um, site plan review, um, I think there's some work to be done and that the city needs some more teeth. It's, it's a fairly vague ordinance that for many years, again, me working on the other side, Paul worked well for the city asking for everything that he could and getting his applicants to give everything that they could to get something permitted. Um, that may not be, the, the ordinance itself is a little bit broad. Um, and may not give us the teeth. So we would like to see a site plan review ordinance that increases, you know, what our teeth are. Uh, different things like landscaping standards, you know, different parking standards, all kinds of things that this was, the initial ordinance was limped into specifically for drainage and utilities. So it would be great to broaden, you know, the teeth of that whole bylaw. Okay. Um. I, don't know. I think I got more conversations for some of the other sure. the other topic areas. Um, I guess I, I'm just I appreciate the work here, but I just don't want to give uh, Mr. Ballo any false sense of hope that you know this project's really going to secure. Because I, I think the fact that he's in a you know the flood zone, the FEMA flood zone is not going to is not going to change. And, and I would say no Correct. matter what what goes on with this uh, in terms of you know fixing the wetland area over yeah. there. The, so as I said, you know, water flows downhill. When we get a big storm, there is no downhill for Mr. Barlow, and that's, and that's right. a scary thing. Um, you know, it's not water in your basement that you can pump out. You're going to have to keep pumping it until it's gone, until the downstream water yeah. is gone. So the same bathtub analogy, and I've used this for years explaining drainage, we have the sand in the bottom of the tub. If we get rid of the sand, and now I talked about from the wetland to the Batupa, there's another channel that runs there that would be like opening the drain on top of that. So we've got, you've got sand that's filling up the tub, and then that, that blocks the outlet as well. So creating the additional storage, because it's just X amount of water, mm -hmm. so many gallons. So you can either put it in the bottom six inches or the top six inches. You get one more drop of water after six inches of rain, we're not, we now have a problem. So mm -hmm. it's nice to use the bottom six inches, which I'm hoping, you know, Paul's study will allow us to. Councilor Kadeem brought up a great point. We may find out that Environmentally, it's going to be very difficult to get rid of what's in the bottom of this pond, uh, but we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. So, in terms of the infrastructure, and I, I guess it's kind of, you know, I'm going to have the same question for the other locations. But infrastructure here for stormwater, everything is overland <coughs> improved, and here everything is overland because there is not an elevation difference enough yep. to get water to flow downhill. Okay, all right. So right and what now, about further what, down towards the uh, the pond. So the, the structures down there. There's some, there. yeah. There's some areas where they go underneath, um, <coughs> under into uh, 
into a culvert. Uh, they go actually underneath uh, one of the mills over in that area. Uh, there's two bridges, actually three bridges now that mm -hmm. they cross under. <clears throat> uh, the recent bridge that was built that was just had stormwater standards so that has the capacity to be able to take. So uh, there's no other structures down uh, towards the pond that it would create any any type of backup or anything like that. No, that well, and Mass Mass DOT owns one of them. Yep. And they're replacing that bridge. It's been going on for a little while, but they're in the process of doing that. Um, we can now, you know, we can look again. Which bridge is that? Is that Jefferson? It's one. Yeah. So there's there's three in the complex. Yeah. Like like Paul stated, the, the last one is for that services Argosy. I mean Atlantis. Atlantis. There's there's two upgrading. I always get mixed up which one is which, uh, mm -hmm. which one's the state owned, which one's the city owned, but. We can go down and, and double check to make sure there are no downstream impediments. Yeah. Um, and that's something that, that we can do within a couple of days. And if there is, then it should be pretty easy to, to remove yeah, those. Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious to see if that, what those look like, those structures. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Yeah. We can, um, I know I have photographic mm -hmm. evidence of the bridge parts of them. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is underground. But I don't know what, what they ever been cameraed or. Can we see what it's like, the underground part of it, just to ensure? We would, yeah, we wouldn't be able to camera that just because of the structure that it is. Um, you know, the flow that goes through there uh, takes all the, so the top bridge is the DOT, the wooden bridge um, mm -hmm. that services the top half of uh, the 99th floor at Jefferson Street. That's a very large uh, open culvert. After that, it goes into a closed culvert underneath the mills. Hasn't been seen anything that there's any type of obstructions due to just the flow that's able to go through mm -hmm. there. So, I, at this point. And you capture all these on your MS4 permitting, right? Is there any issues with those down there? Nope. So there's, no. so there's, those have been uh, checked for illicit discharges and stuff <laughs> like that. We haven't picked anything up. I yield. Um, I know Mr. Barlow is here. Do you have anything you'd like to add to this conversation? Just state your name and address, even though we're all well aware. <laughs> Richard Ball, 50 Anderson Street. Um, my just question is, you know, when the sucker broke when it comes down, if that could just be opened up more to the bleachery pond, like, you know, a channel dug in, because it gets very narrow, and it's only going through pipes about that big, you know? So if it was opened up more to that bleachery pond, and the, the pond before that, where it's like all wetlands, because I walked back there, you know, during a lot of flooding, like last year when my when it flooded, and there's a lot of space where that water could go, you know, um, which would probably be a lot less money if that could just be channeled over that way. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, so as it, as it comes down through to <clears throat> your properties over here, as it comes down through here, it's a pretty well channelized uh, area uh, until it gets to this area, it starts to right. kind of scatter out all over the place. Right, that's what I mean. So if it, was, if it stood in that, they continued that one channel and open that channel up to right to Bleachery Pond. Well, so so Bleachery Pond is over right here. over there. Bleachery right. Pond is elevated from from this area. Your area actually flows through, uh, and there's a, there's an outfall from Bleachery Pond that comes down into here and flows up. And then flows through. And then if yeah. you come up here, you can see this blue line. <laughs> so this comes down, you know, and it runs behind your house as well as the right. tributary. Sucker Brook does this. Right. So Bleachery actually drains into this well. Yeah. The, the idea is to lower that, and clean out that, 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 that the water has somewhere to go. Yeah. Exactly the same. You know, you know, every time I did call Paul, you know, he responded pretty quickly, like I said last time. And um, I did close off my garage and put in a window well around the garage, uh, that one doorway. So, you know, hopefully that will help out with uh, some of the water issues that we have. Like, Just like Mr. Aguilar said, it, it is high, when it is. How high is the water really? Like, on the side of your house, like in relation to, I'm just curious about how high it gets. It's just you mean the last, the last flood we had? The highest was, ever. The highest ever was back in 2010. It was probably about two feet. Wow. So two yeah. feet of standing water around the house? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, back then. And then it, it went down very quick. It's not like it stood there for long. It went down very quickly. No, but it, it does damage quickly. Mm -hmm. It does yeah. do damage quickly. And then last time was uh, last year. And September 2nd. Yeah, last September 2nd. Year. Paul came right down and... Uh, you had about four inches of water. Yeah, because inside the, the inside of the garage, which a lot of the stuff got damaged in there because it just filled up with water. But because I plywooded the whole inside and I cleaned it all with Flex Seal, the stuff does work. <laughs> um, 
it did it did keep the water from going into the house and you know with the door closed and towels and everything else and wet vacs we were able to keep it really from damaging the house so it did help a lot um, but the water did rise up pretty high um, so uh, and so I know the city's really strapped with money and it's, it's not easy to fix all these problems. And so that's why I did a lot what I did to try to fix a lot of the problems, like with the street. I mean, the, my driveway, because when they did the street, that was way before your time, they pitched it right into my driveway. So every time it rained and stuff like that, all that debris ran into my driveway. So I raised the driveway, pitched it out. Um, so I, I, I saw they have that little swale now off to the end of it. Yeah, which probably needs to be redug again. Yeah, well, I looked at it today, so it's, it's a couple of rocks, it's some grass clippings. So it's it's, it's all pretty. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I cut all that grass over there in the, the dirt street right there, I, you know, that paper street. I cut all that all the time, try to keep up with it. But uh, it just needs a good catch basin or something for that water to go into, like Paul said, with the plowing issues. You know, that's, that's a big problem because it, it just causes a dam, like you said. Yep. Water has no place to go. It just then it just backs up from there, and that's the big problem with these with some of these plow guys. That's the water that comes down from Andrews. from down the your street. Big correct. Problem is the water that comes up from your correct. So it's actually you know yeah. coming yeah. like this and yeah. joining joining forces and gaining up on me. So when um, you bought your house again, this is just an engineering curiosity <clears> thing. Did your insurance? Did your mortgage company require you to get flood insurance? The, the house insurance the house isn't completely in the flood zone. It's in I mean, on the maps. It shows <clears> it completely. <throat> in the yeah, zone. but I guess it was removed from a flood zone. Okay. You know, prior to that and from engineers so it only comes up so far okay. so I do have flood insurance on the house only because the house was flooded and they said if you don't have flood insurance you know we won't cover you again so I said well I'll, I'll pay for the flood insurance so I do have flood insurance um, it's uh, it's not cheap and it doesn't cover anything <laughs> flood insurance covers nothing I mean as anybody knows who has flood insurance and it's not cheap it's very expensive and uh, to try to sell a property like that now, knowing that it has you know flooding issues, you know how much would I get for a property like that now? <laughs> and to find a property like that, I mean it is a good piece of property. It's a good, yeah, no, it's a nice spot. It's a nice yeah. piece of property, yeah. and uh, I like to try to do everything I can to work with the city. Like I said, to try to resolve the problem. That's why when I built the second garage, when I closed off the garage, I raised it up higher. So that last storm we had, I didn't get a, a drop of water in there because I did raise it up enough. Like you said, you know, raising it up higher, but. From what I understand from the neighbors that lived there prior, when they first built that house, that house has two foundations. So there's a foundation, there's a foundation on top of it because of the wetlands. So, so they didn't it right? Right, because of the, wet, because of the uh, groundwater back then. So um, you know, like you said, is you know, they let a pass nowadays. I know the guy, um, the lot right across the street I was talking with Paul, he wants to build a house over there. So that was really low. That's it, on the that, left hand side of the right. is it Dunbar? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dupris. Dupris. Right. Yeah. So that first house on your left. Yeah. Right. It goes, I, I it goes down. Way, and he wants to empty. build yeah. a house over there. He wanted to sell to me. But anyway, it's like, well, if they build here, they got to raise that all up. Now, where's that water going to go exactly. now? So, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I have no problem with people building. They want to build, that's fine, you know. Um, I know you did my friend's. Uh, my neighbor's house, the and you did and the other guy's house, and they're, they're great neighbors, you know, yeah. so to fight people because you don't want a neighbor, you never know what you're going to have for neighbors. I mean, they're, they're both great people. Um, Do we have anything else um, to, in addressing this flooding? Do we have a motion? I mean, what I, I, would, I would like to at least offer that but during whatever the next rainstorm is. I mean, I'll go out and take a look at it again, and if there's anything that we can recommend or to make, even put a Band-Aid on, make any improvement, you know, I, I can offer that up. And I'll, like, I'll speak to Mr. Barlow and, and Paul about that just to see if, it's, if there's anything. It might not resolve the whole problem, but maybe it's something incremental that in the, in the meantime we can get some improvement on. So if it's, if it's a three-inch rainstorm that would normally flood you, maybe we can, maybe we can accommodate that. We may not, a seven-inch mm -hmm. rainstorm, everywhere's going to be devastating. Right. But we get more of those than, than, than what, we, mm -hmm. what we used to get. Council Pelter? Make a motion. Yes. That we table item uh, three and four uh, until we can get enough money from grants and that the city can maybe uh, fund some money towards the problem that we have on Anderson Street. But that would be a combination thing as well, right? 
Yeah, so I think the next time we should probably meet is once we come up with, uh, once the engineers spend some time looking at it and, you know, what they come up with out of the design, that's the next time we should probably just talk with everybody. Uh, and then we'll, by then we'll, we'll hopefully have a funding plan set uh, or something in sight to move forward with. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? You, None? You think of something yeah. I can do? I'll be more than glad to. Okay. You Sometimes know. a fresh set of eyes. Put some more money towards it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Item number five, resolution, City Administrator, Director of Financial Services and Administrative Community Utilities. Be invited to the Committee on Public Works and Transportation to discuss solutions to the flooding issues connected to the Stafford Square area. Refer 91421. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mr. Phil. Very easy to do. If it was Put the big pipe, Stafford Square, hook it right at the Crooked Jam River, and then buildings. But that's illegal, right? Yeah. That's the only way you can straighten that thing out. Uh, well, no, but that is the general concept. Yeah. But there's just a well, lot that goes yeah, along with it. Yeah, you're talking $42 million. It's, a, it's crazy. A, it's a big drainage area, and it affects neighborhood on top yeah. of neighborhood. I mean, you don't understand... Everybody says water flows downhill. <coughs> it all flows yeah. to one spot. So, so Stafford Square, if it was an easy fix, I'm sure the city probably it's wouldn't. Easy, legal, right? <laughs> they probably would have done it by now. There's photos we have from the 50s and 60s of cars going through the, you know, two feet of water through that intersection. Oh, flip my page. So, Stafford Square, just for reference, Stafford Square, the area that flows is right down here. This is Eastern Avenue, up here in Fullock Street, Locust Street, the Old Grove Cemetery. So, this area. <coughs> so you're talking over a 600 acre drainage area that comes down to this one point. Um, there are multiple <coughs> different um, drainage systems. Uh, so on this map, all the green is the sewer system. Uh, the magenta color is the, uh, is the separated drainage system. There are separated drainage systems that run through this area, but they're not big enough to handle the amount of water that's, that's coming down through this area. Again, you're talking to go as far back as Bullock Street. Uh, all this water, all this water, coming down to this to this one point. Uh, and then, as you said, trying to make its way out to the Quibishan. Uh, so very difficult. There, there's multiple different options that we looked at uh, for this project. You know, we looked at, is it cheaper? So we take and we put a control structure on South Watapa so we can drop the Quibishan to get the water out. Um, do we take and dredge out the whole entire Quibishan to make additional storage capacity? You know, there was a lot of different options that we looked at uh, for this. Can we do one option that's going to be lower cost that will, you know, improve the the area? And it just wasn't, not, nothing was working hydraulically. Um, coming out of the back here, there are some restrictions. There will have to be some dredging of the, of the channel that goes out through the back and then also the quicker shan. Um, there is... Uh, increased piping that's going to have to be done uh, coming down County Street, coming down Pleasant Street, uh, and then through this whole entire area of uh, uh Carlissa Street, Healy Street, uh, all the way up to Bedford Street. So, you know, Stafford Square, we get the, the flooding deep uh, on Stafford Square area. Uh, that, deck, that relates directly to the flooding that happened at Calissa Drive and Tiffany Drive. Um, and then also as far back as Bedford Street. So that's the tailwater from the flooding that happens over here. So the flooding that occurs with the heavy rainstorms next to Columbus Park, that low area there, is all related to Stafford Square. Uh, so a couple of different big things that we're dealing with. There used to be a large quarry up in this area. We deal with the drain that comes out of that quarry that comes down the old uh, quarry drain. Uh, there's another white brook drain that comes down through here uh, and out through Stafford Square. And then there's also another drain 
older drain that comes down Pleasant and then also goes out. Um, <coughs> overall, the study that we ended up doing, so part of the integrated, uh, the uh, authorization that, uh, that we had um, allowed us to take and start a study of this area. So we, <coughs> we had one of our consultant engineers go into this whole entire area. Uh, we've surveyed all the manholes coming down through this area, all the catch basins. Uh, we've, uh, we've done flow monitoring on them, both the sanitary and the stormwater systems. Because the other problem is, you get up into all these areas that don't have the separated drains. That's the catch basins going into the combined sewer. So by the time you get to Stafford Square, you have combined sewer issue, plus then also overburden drainage system. So it's two issues that you're dealing with at that one point. Um, so they did a lot of modeling through that whole entire area. Uh, what we're working on right now, uh, we're putting together a application uh, for the hazard mitigation. We plan to submit it for hazard mitigation uh, and the BRIC program. Um, so this whole entire project was, was three phases uh, and then an additional um, green infrastructure phase that could have been added on. First three phases were a total of $45 million. The green infrastructure phase uh, was, was an additional $6 million. Um, so what we ended up doing for the hazard mitigation application that we're going to be submitting uh, is, is we kind of took phase one and phase two. So phase one and phase two really looks like it's going to solve the majority of the flooding through that intersection. Uh, that's going to include going back, installing larger culverts running down through this area, larger culverts running down County Street, increase some of the culverts coming down Pleasant Street, separate out a lot of the, uh, a lot of the combined catch basins that go into the sewer, pull those out of the sewer, put them into separated drain lines, dredge out and clean the channel that, that heads out towards the Quicker Shand and certain, clean up of certain areas of Quicker Shand River as well <coughs> to increase that flow. Um, so that brought that project down to about $32 million. Um, through the hazard mitigation plan, uh, and I'm in contact, uh, we, we're applying to MEMA. MEMA then applies to FEMA. Um, and they're, they're excited about this project. They like this project. This is the same funding that we got when we did the Middle Street project. Uh, so we got uh, over five and a half billion dollars back when we did the Middle Street project from this same program to be able to uh, do uh, flooding uh, repairs. Uh, one of the biggest things with this program is making the cost-benefit analysis uh, through FEMA's structured cost-benefit analysis program, making that work so that it's a bubble one. Uh, so your benefit is higher than your cost. Uh, we went into a lot of buildings in that surrounding area. We were able to get uh, base level elevations. Uh, with those base level elevations, we were able to uh, show potential inundation uh, if there was an issue, which brought a lot of our uh, a lot of uh, uh, BCA calculations up as well. When this intersection is inundated, there's a healthcare facility uh, over on Quarry Street, which is impacted, as well as uh, service vehicles in uh, regular. Um, you know, normal access through that area. So the biggest hurdle through that whole entire process that I feel was the cost-benefit analysis evaluation, which we've been able to, uh, which we've been able to prove. We've submitted that already to MEMA for their initial evaluation to go through, make sure that they agree with all of us. Uh, the full application date is uh, December fifth, which uh, we're on track to submit the application for funding. Now, this particular agenda item is directly connected to a resolution that Councilor Pam Liberty had submitted, um, specifically 10 Tiffany Drive and Carlissa Drive. Yep. So everything that you just discussed will affect them. How will it help mitigate their problems, and what is the timeline on it, if it will? Yeah, so again, all of... All, the, all this planning, all of this work that would be done would, would mitigate their problem. So the problem with that, if you look at the topo elevations, um, Stafford Square, you're at 139, 138 or so in the low point of Stafford Square. Uh, you go to Carlissa and Tiffany Drive, you're at 139. So even though they're far apart and you go up a little bit and down a little bit, the actual elevations are almost mm -hmm. very, very close. So that's why when you get the backup in Stafford Square, 
you'll also get it on Carlos and Drive because it's it water seeks the same level, um, you know, and it's not able to move down through that system and out to the quicker shan. So again, uh, this project would. Uh, repair the issues over at the Calissa and Tiffany Drive. Uh, phase one and phase two as, as we've planned it out. Um, the, uh, the timeline for the project, again, we submit uh, coming up. Uh, when we did Middle Street, the review process through FEMA uh, was pretty lengthy uh, when they reviewed and by the time they awarded. Uh, I believe we were a, a year or two uh, on the review process till we were able to access the funding. Uh, at that point, we were able to move forward with the project. Uh, construction time frame on this project, I would expect uh, between full design uh, and construction to be uh, probably a two to three year time frame. Um, you know, this is a busy intersection, a lot of utilities that we have to relocate, uh, reconstruct. The project also includes reconstructing um, the whole entire intersection, all the signalization, sidewalks, paving through that whole entire area and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I definitely can feel for these people. I was Without somebody that was severely impacted when Mount Hope Avenue erupted. I was end of the line, got it all. Um, I mean, you're talking thousands of dollars in damage, so I, I can fully sympathize. Is there anything that we can do now um, to help them to any extent? I mean, you know, I mean, it's great to hear it and mitigate it. It's great to hear. Hopefully, we're going to do it, but. When you're having that kind of damage and, and you're getting flooded, two to three years is a long time. No, oh, without a doubt, it, it definitely is. You know, again, through this whole entire area, uh, we looked at every potential easier, cheaper, quicker option that was available to us. Uh, you know, our crews have been out there uh, over the years cleaning all those drain lines, making sure that everything's uh, open and available. Uh, in the parking lot of, uh, of the Flint Village uh, shopping plaza there. There's a sedimentation basin in there that we clean out regularly. Um, you know, it, it is uh, a tough circumstance, but uh, as, uh, you know, um, Mr. Aguiar said, the, uh, the intensity of these rainstorms are, are drastically changing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when you're talking, you know, September 2nd of last year, that impacted Mr. Paulo, impacted... Uh, you know, color serendipity, you're talking six and a half inches of rain in six hours overnight. Uh, it was a pretty substantial amount yeah. of rain. <laughs> yeah, my yard was flooded again. <laughs> yeah. Most people's were. <laughs> yeah. Um, do we have the resident of 10 Tiffany Drive here? Yep. Would you like to speak? Ask any questions? Council Kadim, I'm going to let Council Kadim ask questions. Um, just in terms of the funding, how much funding have you had besides the hazardous mitigation for this project, for the study? Okay. Um, so again, slated within the $123 million authorization, I believe it was a total of, uh, initially we did a for the dis for the initial study was a three hundred thousand dollar contract with the uh, engineers. Um, that's what was approved within that authorization. Uh, we've taken and been able to uh, put some additional funds uh, from some other flooding uh, authorizations. Uh, so we've put in roughly about five hundred thousand dollars. I would say at this point. Okay, and then phase one, phase two. You said is how much? So phase one and phase two is uh, estimated right now at 32 million. 32, and then 45 if we do the three phases. Yes. Okay. So you're looking to do phase one and two with the application to, for the hazard mitigation? Yes. Okay. And then what is phase three, and I guess where, where are we anticipating that money coming from? Uh, so phase three uh, goes up into, the, into this area further, so goes as far back as Lafayette Park uh, and then up into uh, the Eddy Street uh, areas. Um, I think at this point right now, phase one and phase two is a, uh, is a very good start. So then we can evaluate and see uh, how much of phase three potentially would have to uh, be built out to um, help those, those upper stream areas. But, you know, again, with a drainage area like this, you've got to start from the bottom yeah. real big and work your way up and out. Yeah, my, I guess my only concern is, is that, I mean, as you mentioned, this goes back to the 60s, right? So just having these conversations and it's taken us this long to even get to 
the planning stages, right? Just to get modeling and figure out what we need to do. And then, you know, because we always knew it was quick as Shannon and talking about dredging that and, and doing that, that whole infrastructure project. So I just don't want to lose momentum while we have it, right? So if, if we've got a study that's calling for three, uh, three phases, then for me personally, I think we need to figure out how we get to the third phase. And because and, it's not, it's not fair that we're, we're ha handling some here and then we're still going to have some, some issues, you know, uphill a little bit more, um, you know, especially with the study. So from my standpoint, that's, that's where I want to go and I want to just know where, where we need to go, how we need to get there, and, and how I need to advocate to get the funding to where we need to be. Because I don't see us having this conversation ever again in terms of <laughs> Stafford, you know, Square. Stafford Square once we get phase one and two. That's, that's just me personally. I know how things tend so, to work. So Yeah, so again, with the phase one and phase two, we, we pulled in everything that, so through the hazard mitigation plan, they're not going to partially fund something that's going to fix just a portion of the mm -hmm. problem. Um, Phase three, again, goes up further uh, into the drainage area, gets the stuff into pipes quicker, um, rather than having it sheet flow down to areas to be able to get into the pipe. Uh, so, you know, phase three, we kind of looked at as uh, almost, um, I wouldn't say an ancillary, but an additional step um, that, that could be taken if needed uh, in the future. Um, with the cost-benefit analysis that, uh, that was done, Again, we're trying to uh, balance the funding options, the cost-benefit analysis, and being able to actually do the project. So uh, that's why we came up with the phase one, phase two options. And what was the green infrastructure? What's so green infrastructure was doing uh, some bioretention areas uh, up in like the Lafayette Park area, um, doing some down the Pleasant Street, uh, doing some green infrastructure, tree box filters, bioretention bump outs and different things throughout that. Uh, we still do have a uh, certain amount of green infrastructure built into the project because uh, it's beneficial to our MS4 permit um, to be able to have it. its required by our MS4 permit to have that within there. Um, but, um, you know, some of the uh, ancillary prettier things yep. okay. were kind of cut. I think so, a good way to look at it is for an understanding, phase one and two, and correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, phase one and two resolves the flooding issue. Phases one, two, and three mimic what you would do if you were starting from scratch and designing a drainage system for this area. Mm -hmm. That That's the difference. So. Okay. Yeah. So the dredging of the quicker shams is in phase one and two? It's it's within there for certain okay. areas, yeah. So does that, how is that going to impact, and I know we're, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but does that impact the Jefferson Street? Because I would, I would assume that all ties into the Jefferson Street flooding as well. So Jefferson Street is a chase pond on the other side of 195. So um, quicker shan doesn't? It, it, so Chase Pond ties into, into quicker shan underneath okay. 195, um, but the area of uh, Jefferson has other issues okay. within that. The overall dredging, um, the overall dredging that is required uh, potentially could be permitted at the same time. Uh, it mm -hmm. would be something that we'd be looking at doing if we're going to be going through that type of permitting because yep. that's a pretty heavy lift for permitting to be able to uh, dredge out those areas. So it's something that we're keeping in mind uh, to do full dredging of potentially both of those areas. So now, what what about the uh, the infrastructure going out to the Quickshan to the to the Mount Hope Bay is uh, Tongue River is what's so, that infrastructure look like? So that's all in good, all in good condition, and I apologize, my allergies tonight are just uh, a little crazy. But uh, so those are all in good condition. Uh, back in two thousand fourteen or so, uh, we reconstructed the inlet at Plymouth Avenue, uh, mm -hmm. as well as the uh, gates at Fourth Street, right across the yep. street here from City Hall. Uh, when they did uh, the Route 79 spaghetti ramps downstream from here, uh, they, uh, we had some restrictions on uh, the Quickishan outfall that goes down underneath the bridge, comes out of Battleship Cove. Uh, Mass DOT repaired that. Uh, and then also we had the, uh, we had the uh, Firestone uh, culvert that goes over to Crab Pond area uh, over by the Firestone complex and then discharges out into the bay. They clean that whole entire culvert underneath the mills running through that area. So uh, the quickest shin from that down is uh, is in good condition. Okay. And you said two to three years from design to completion? That's that's our expectation of how our plan is now. Roughly. And how long we anticipate for, I guess, a response on the uh, hazard mitigation funding? So again, uh, on the Middle Street project, that, that was lengthy. I want to say it was almost two years till, till we had a response. Uh, 
of approval to be able to move forward with the project. I think since then, that was a number of years ago, FEMA and FEMA have uh, worked better together to be able to get those responses out a lot quicker. Okay. With that, I yield. So we're looking at a, a minimum 32 million to 45 million for a total project? Is that what you said? Uh, so, so I'm expecting to put in the grant application for 32 million. 32 million. Yeah. Um, do you have any anticipated amount of what you think you'll be approved for based on past history? You know, again, I, I can't say. I can tell you that the match, depending on the program, the match is either 10% or 25%. Um, the one that's 25, which is the brick, uh, potentially can be dropped down to 10%. Um, so that's... Uh, you know, something that we're hoping that we'll be able to uh, do. My uh, my hope is that if the project is funded, it would be fully funded at $32 million. Council Pelton? Well, you know, I get education here tonight. I didn't know it went as far as it goes. But like you guys say, it flows down, it flows down. But I didn't know it went all the way up to Eastern Avenue and uh, every place else. But it all drains down there, so... And what size pipe do you put in the big, bigger pipes? Or? Yeah, so down through the uh, down through that area, there's there's going to be some large culverts uh, running through there. I believe they were uh, five by eight yeah. box culverts uh, running through the intersection. Uh, there's there's two pairs of them that'll be running through through that area, uh, plus leaving the existing ones in place as well. Well, you you know I followed the progress on Middle Street, and uh, of course they blame St. Anne's for that. But it had to be done anyway, and I think you got a good handle on this. Uh, you know, it's been a long time coming. Uh, you seem to have uh, all the abilities to get the monies, and I guess the people that go out there to tell you, hey, we got to do this, this, and this, and uh, I, I think you're doing a very good job, and uh, I get confidence in you that this will be squared away. And at uh, the cheapest that we can get it with the funds that you can get. And uh, I know you, you're pretty good at getting funds and all that stuff. So I got to commend you on the job that you're doing and the work that you do in the city. You know, I've been to a few places where you had the main broke. The one was on Bedford Street. And I went down there, you were there. And you were down there late at night. And uh, even Middle Street, you had a break there. You were down there. So, I mean, you're all, all over the place. Uh, I, I, I think uh, the first call that comes in probably goes to you. And you get all the men out to go out there to work, and, and they do one hell of a job for you. So, uh, I just say, uh, just keep it up. Uh, you know, there's uh, rumors out there, maybe you're leaving or not leaving. But uh, you got my vote to stay, believe me. So I hope everything works out for you and the city of Fall River. With that, I yield. If you would both uh, state your name and address just for the record. Um, I'm Monica Justino, 10 Tiffany Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason Justino, 10 Tiffany Drive, Fall River. So we're just basically just wondering if there's anything that you recommend that either we can do or that can be done in this year wait. There's, there's really not. Because again, this isn't water that's coming off of your property or an upgradient property mm -hmm. that's causing flooding. Mm -hmm. Your flooding is occurring from this staff at Square Area through the pipe system mm -hmm. and basically fills that system so your water has nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, you can make some small improvements, whether they be, like, I don't know if you have, um, like if your downspouts are connected, like the infiltration chambers, like roof drains under the ground, but again, just your house alone, isn't really going to fix that. You, you would need 200 homes to do that. And through site plan review, we do require that now from everybody to get their roof run, run off into a ground and infiltrate into groundwater, not into the pipes in the city streets. Mm -hmm. That wasn't done back when back when that subdivision was built. You're right at the corner? Yeah, yeah okay. the house yeah. was built in 2017. Okay, yeah, so I, I, had, I went out there maybe a month or two ago to look at that. Um, okay. Um, and you just happen to be, you know, the catch basin that's at the entrance of that subdivision road is the low spot. You stand there and look around, it's uphill to everywhere. So even when that water gets filled, it's just going to keep rising until the bottom end of it can alleviate that from happening. So, so to fix that area would be bigger pipe. Bigger pipe from your street 
all the way down to the Quickishan River, all those pipes would be enlarged and increased. That's this whole program, and that's what costs. Yeah, because we just know, installed so like a vinyl fencing, and we just had like one whole side like last September that we had to like replace, short, yeah. like short time after installing it. So it was just like one of those. Was it that September that, storm that? <laughs> that, that yeah. Storm. yeah. Before yeah, it happens so, okay. before that, but yeah. not in that volume. Of course, that volume right. was understandable sure. of how much rainfall we got. Nobody could have predicted that, but the damage from the fence, like it's still like kind of like bowing. Right. Mm -hmm. But any impact of water now with the pressure just causes damage, and we're trying to prevent to have to keep replacing it on a yearly basis throughout five years or so. I know it's. I wish it was. This, I wish it was a simple solution. I wish there was. I, I wish there was a hole on the ground. 50 feet from your house mm -hmm. that I could say, just run, we're gonna run a pipe from there to there, but that hole doesn't exist. That, that, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. it's, it's stressful. You know, it's Especially because we weren't disclosed this information. We right. specifically asked not. if that yeah. area was prone to flooding and everybody said, no, no, you're fine. No flood insurance involved. Nobody ever told us that we ever needed it. Yeah, well, flood insurance is different, you know, depending yeah, upon where no, you're at. Exactly. You're not in a flood so, zone. Right, you know, and that's, that's the problem that we flooding. run by too, so nothing is Especially when your life saves into something. I understand and, completely. You know, it's yeah, so. very stressful. I'm sorry we don't have better information for you, but in the scheme of things, as much you're, as two or three years <laughs> is a long time, it actually at least it quickly. gives us a timeline that right. we can focus on. Yeah. Right, right. At and least, at least we, wanted, you, we wanted an answer. It's, right, you know, and at least you know there please is Please know it's not ignored. I mean, this oh, study, okay. how long has this study, did you have this done? So this has been cool. sitting for a while. He's just now getting to some funding opportunities that have the ability Which we to appreciate do that. Yeah, very we much. definitely do. Yeah. And what I'm glad about, Mr. Barlow has been on, dealing with this for 12 years, and he has no answer. It is what it is. His house is too low, and he's just going to suffer this as long as he owns his home. At least in your case, it's going to be mitigated. It will be fixed, and someday, and not so far down the road, you won't have these problems anymore. We so at least that. that's some solace. Right. I wish Absolutely. we could give you more, but I'm glad that at least yeah, there is some positive news. Yeah, at least some light. Yes, right. exactly. Yeah. Positive yeah. results. I'm going to get pending the funding. You know, one thing that the council is always supportive is all these grant funds, our local delegation is always supportive. Uh, we'll probably be looking for other letters from other people within the area too when we're submitted, finally submitting that application. So. It would be nice if they got an answer back to you quickly and if there were any additional funding necessary that we could vote some more opera funding to help you out. Do we'll, well, I guess. Uh, Council Kadeem? So I, w I wasn't going to go there, but I, I guess I'm going to go there. Uh, so the APA money, so we can't use APA money if we're getting additional federal monies. Um, at least that's my understanding. So I, I guess from, from a funding standpoint, um, we're not taking into account the use of APA money. I mean, I guess for the study it's okay, but right. for the project itself. So, so at this point, we haven't been looking at APA funding because I've been, I've been working probably four months now on this HMGP and, and mm -hmm. BRIC funding application. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's pretty substantial. We've had to have surveyors go out, like I said, and stuff like that. So we've been working towards that. Uh, again, with the project of this magnitude, um, you know, I think I told this council when Oppa was first out many times, I could have taken all the Oppa funding mm -hmm. and yeah. spent it <laughs> very quickly with, with the amount of work that needs to be done citywide. Um, so, you know, uh, again, up funding at this time, you know, if we move forward with this, if, you know, a grant is approved for $3.2 million, uh, I would hope that uh, within our, uh, overall uh, CIP and, and spending plan that we'd be able to uh, afford an authorization of either the 10% yeah. or, or a match. And, and that's fine. I just want to make sure we weren't banking on any op money because if it's, especially if it's Bristol County, it's going to go through two reviews uh, for an auditing firm and they're going to, they're going to kick it out if they find out we're uh, getting any type of federal assistance for this yep. project. So, okay. I yield. Do we have a motion? A uh, motion to the table till we get uh, funding from whatever resources that Mr. Phil feels like he can get it and come back and roll and report to us when you can start the job. You start tomorrow? <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I could start all these tomorrow. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, we're doing our best. It's been there for a long time. I think we're moving ahead. And I think we're going to see some solution very Se shortly. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 
Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you, thank you so guys much. very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item number six, a resolution committee of public works and transportation meet with the residents of Grinnell and Jefferson Street areas, the administration of community utility, administrator of community utilities, city engineer to discuss flooding issues, referred October 11th, 22. So I guess just an update. Yeah, I feel like I can do a brief presentation. Uh, so I was in front of the uh, local neighborhood association uh, a week or two ago. I think they have a representative here as well. It's the council of yeah. so, um, so, uh just for reference, quicker share street comes down. This is Jefferson Street uh, heading up to Bray Nav here, Rodman Street here. Warren Street running this way. Uh, so this is Walmart, this is the old Sam's Club. Um, <clears throat> what you have here is about a 60 acre uh, drainage area that comes down uh, again, you know, to low points. This has kind of been the <laughs> repetitive uh, issue that, that we've been talking about tonight is a large area coming down to a low area of the city uh, that doesn't have proper capacity uh, for drainage. Uh, so this plan is from the uh, 2015 integrated plan that was that was done for the city. Uh, identified uh, sewer, stormwater, uh, wastewater work that needed to be done, CSO work throughout the whole entire city in the 40 to 50 years. Um, areas of flooding. So this, this drainage system goes into Chase Pond right here, which we talked about. So this is 195. Uh, crosses underneath 125, 195 in some large culverts to the quicker shan, eventually outflows through the quicker shan uh, down to the top of the river. Uh, there is a separated drainage area that comes up through this area. Uh, so it starts right here on uh, Warren Street next to the cable company building. Uh, just behind there, just off to the left hand side, there's an outfall of the pipe. Uh, the pipe crosses the street. Uh, travels through the backyards of all the houses that are on Leaf Street and uh, Utah Street, uh, continues up, passes uh, in between the sign and supply building and the, uh, and the houses that are to the uh, east of sign and supply, uh, continues across Grinnell Street uh, in the between houses uh, until it gets to Omen Street, heads towards the uh, west, and then uh, continues down and out into Great Nav. Is separated break, catch basins on Great Nav uh, as well as Aberdeen Street. Uh, low points within this, so there's areas, there's a separate drainage system as well in the Quickershan Jefferson Street Warren uh, that has a separate outfall that goes to Chase Pond and comes out this way. Um, you know, again, we're dealing with an undersized drainage system to be able to take the uh, intensity of the rainstorms that, that, we've, been, uh, that we've been dealing with. Uh, as well as you know the construction that has happened within the, this area, uh, the outfall over here does open up to a pipe. Uh, this channel through here has had some sediment build up uh, over time. That's one thing that we're looking at right now uh, to be able to get in there to clear out to make sure that that has a uh, flow path uh, to be able to uh, get right out to Chase Pond without any obstructions. Um, that is something that we're currently working on. I'm looking to bring a contractor in to do that work because uh, there's some specialized equipment that's, that's required. Uh, so that may provide uh, some moderate uh, alleviation to the issue, just not sure how much because one of the problems is you still have the Quickershan and Chase Pond that have a tailwater that come back up this pipe uh, almost to Grinnell Street. Uh, so, there, so this pipe, even when it's not ready to go, has water in it because it was built lower than what the quickest share of the chase, chase pond is, uh, which causes an issue. <coughs> um, you have, again, this, the area here, you have flooding that occurs on Warren Street, flooding that occurs on Grinnell Street, uh, flooding that occurs on Brayton Ave, uh, all due to this issue, uh, back up to the Serta uh, bus lot. Um, last week after I met with these uh, the residents on Monday night, Tuesday morning, we had a water main break, I briefed uh, the council on uh, that issue uh, that occurred right here 
when I showed up about 5.30 in the morning, um, the water that was flowing down Oman Street, Reeves Street, uh, Grinnell Street was, uh, had some inundation on it. Um, so, uh, you know, all that water was mm -hmm. traveling down that way, you know, uh, out, Chase, out to Chase Pond. Um, you know, as the council knows, there was some contamination issues. We had to put booms out there and stuff like that. But uh, after that, our crews did go out and uh, jet all the lines uh, with the LSP that was on site, clean all the catch basins, again, to make sure that everything was clean from that, uh, from that area. This is one of the areas that we run through pretty regularly, factoring out the catch basin to make sure that, uh, that everything gets clean. Uh, one of the other issues through this low area here uh, is groundwater issues. So the soil conditions, I remember when we were, when we were replacing Main on Utah Street, um, some of that soil we actually had to, uh, we actually had to store on a site and properly dispose of through the mass contingency plan because of, uh, because of the, you know, urban, type of urban soil it was. Um, so some of the fill that's within this area isn't, uh, isn't great. Uh, and then also the groundwater is able to flowly, you know, Slowly flow through and, uh, and you know affect some of that area. So it's kind of an overview. Uh, one of the plans. So through the integrated plan, again, kind of took a ninety thousand foot view to look at potential uh, issues uh, or potential solutions. You know, solutions that would have that would have to be done uh, that they looked at. So this whole entire area comes way back up almost to uh, almost to Plymouth Avenue. This drainage area is coming down this way uh, on, Rock, on Warren Street. So it's again, it's a pretty uh, massive area. We would have to go up through these neighborhoods, uh, separate drainage system running down to a separate outfall coming through here. Uh, take and lodge this drainage system, these drainage pipes through here. Extend these up to get the uh, water into the into the drainage system earlier. Uh, one of the issues that we're dealing with when you get over here, this pipe over here only has about a foot of cover on the pipe. So from the top of the pipe to the ground surface is only about a foot. So that pipe is as high as it can come without coming out of the ground. So those are some of the issues that we're dealing with, that we'll be dealing with with constructability. And that doesn't allow for much drainage on the surface either. In, uh, Correct, exactly. So when you, when you have a pipe that already has a tailwater in it, and you're dealing with the pipe so close to the ground, there's not much spot besides the road surface mm -hmm. that it has to be able to pump. You know, again, uh, after a rainstorm, after it starts to subside, uh, you know, these areas do, the drainage does subside uh, and, and move out, but it does impact the residents in that area. So are you, how are you going to fix that issue? Well, so again, that's, you know, <laughs> In the 2015 plan, the, uh, it was identified roughly about $11 million. That was 2015 uh, dollars. So it's drastically changed since then. But that would be doing drainage, larger drainage system up in this area, uh, increasing the drainage, the size of the pipe running down through this area, uh, getting more drainage in, in out in these further areas to be able to convey it through the pipe system now. Uh, and then dredging of this whole area is another portion of that. So you would still have the water draining out to Chase Pond. Chase Pond. Yeah. yeah, there's no real other way to do you it. You can't read. Is that is that wetland right there with the? Is it just great or is that? So um, I don't know the directional. So, so this e is the east of way. east of the uh, where yeah Walmart is and stuff right there right there. Yeah, right. so that's another pond, but um, again, so that part of the quicker shear that flows this way. So the elevation over here potentially could be higher. And to make this break, to get from these low points, because this, you're almost coming uphill, and then Jefferson breaks back down. So what did you do with Rodman Street? So Rodman Street was always flooded, similar to, um, and maybe it was a different issue, but you know when you get to Rod, Rodman and, uh, is it uh, Manchester Street? Rodman and Manchester. No, no, down further. Um, like next to Stop and Shop, that that was always flooding. Yeah, so Tecumseh. Yeah, so no, further down. So yeah. I think it's Manchester. When so you get Manchester, in, when Lawrence, you get into Lowell, Lowell, and, uh, and uh, Lewiston Street. Yeah, yeah. So part of the CSO project, that's where the uh, end of the tunnel was with the final drop shaft. 
at the end of Lewis and Street. So that separated combined sewer that comes down Rodman Street now diverts into the 20-foot diameter tunnel rather than heading towards Hotwell Street. Mm -hmm. So that alleviated the flooding uh, in that area as long as the tunnel is open. I guess I'm, I'm just... I so we, we feel that with the, I'm, I'm sorry. No, oh, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> um, so you feel by adding the additional drainage, you'll be able to rectify the problem with the piping itself being obviously lower than well, the Chase Pond? So. Because I, I, I just, I just, yeah. I'm struggling in my mind to, when so we have a large rainstorm that it's just going to back, backfill ever, anyways. If you've ever been through this Rodman intersection on a pretty heavy rainstorm, yep. you get water that's blowing right, yeah, down, yeah. right through yeah. that intersection be able to get all of this into a separate pipe with a separate outfall um, that at this point could be higher, you know, so it gets all of that out of this drainage system, opens up some capacity there. Um, this, being able to bring these up further uh, and then opening up this pipe, um, you know, making it a larger capacity so that it could push out. Uh, nice bioretention. Uh, facility at the old Watapa Heights facility. Uh, I, we thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would make a so beautiful. They, so there are some, there are some short, immediate improvements that all I think that we can make in here to make somewhat of a difference. First of all, just cleaning out that existing swale out to out to, to Chase Pond will do something dramatic. The next thing we've talked about is grabbing some of that upgradient water not allowing that piping system to come down to mm -hmm. where you see low point, right. catching it and redirecting it. Those, those, those are actually quick and small, or smaller projects, construction right. projects yeah. that, that can be handled almost in-house or um, something like that. So we've, we've started having that discussion and initiating some of those improvements. Right. Um, yeah. So again, the first thing we, we get it out into this area to make sure that that is open, clean out any of the sediment within the drainage swale there. Uh, that's something we're working to bring in a contractor to do because it's pretty swampy out there and we don't want to lose. So is, is, is there, Chase so. Pond the one that wraps around next to Lewiston Street? Yep. That, that goes Pond right behind the incinerator? What is yeah. 195. What you see right off the highway? Yep. Two swans out. Yeah. 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 So this is, when we look at all, all three sites, this is the easiest one to fix because we do have elevation at our advantage. Everything upgrading of Rodman, or actually, actually everything upgrading to the west, elevation works. Right. Um, now it's just a matter of making everything that's on the low area big enough to take that all. Yeah. So. so, but in terms of the backflow for a lodge, yep. you know, let's just say call it a, a ten-year storm that seems like it's happening every other month. Yep. Um, so if you do all that drainage system, would, there's still no, cons I guess, do we still have concern that that pipe is going to create flooding in that well, area? No. So what will happen is right now, every, so when you see the word low point and you get the pipe and the, the ditch that go out to Chase Pond, yep. just about all of it goes through that. What we want to do is take everything west and put it in a separate pipe. So mm -hmm. basically splitting up the two areas and putting it through two pipes yeah. rather than putting it all through one. So just the fact of... Eliminating half the water that gets to this pipe. Yeah, no, I, I guess I get that that part. I'm, I'm talking about the pond itself, right? Because you've yeah. got water coming from the pond. So when the pond is getting filled only from all this rain, yeah, yeah, yeah it's going back, height. right? Is, is that? Yeah, this we, this tail water in, in a lot of drainage systems, you deal with tail, you deal with tail tail water. Uh, you know, most of our CSOs. But we're not concerned. Once you get the drainage, we're not concerned about that additional backflow of the tail water going in to, to create. It's the just a, it's just yeah. something that you design around. So if you have a let's just say a 12 inch pipe, and there's always six inches of water in the bottom of it, yeah. in your calculation, you can only use half the pipe in your right. calculation. Okay. Or you might need two 12 inch pipes. Yep. Each one of them might be six inches submerged, but now you have two tops of six inches. So okay. that's, the, that's the game that you have to play. Because we can't, you know, we can only lower, just like in all the other instances, lowering Chase Pond, if we can do it without doing that, the other sites, we don't really have an option. Mm -hmm. you know, um, and that's a pretty drastic option to, to have to go and do that. So we think that this can be done 
a little bit easier. Yeah, Mastagia has got a lot of uh, pressure on his shoulders. He used to he used to live in that neighborhood along with myself. So I was at I was at that. Just we call it the Highlands. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. We, we call it. Yeah, we, we do call it the Highlands. Yeah. Niagara Fire Station. Yeah, I was I was <laughs> right on. Area. I was right on uh, Rodman and uh, Buffington. So. Yeah. All right, I yield. Thank you. So how soon can we get on this one? What type of funding is required? Uh, <coughs> what type of assistance would you need to move this along? So again, I think our first step is to be able to get out there uh, with a contractor. That's something we're looking to do, uh, be able to do with our current funding. Uh, so I'll be able to clean out that, uh, that swale heading out, um, you know, at least as far as we can get in a reasonable uh, manner, uh, and see see what what effect that that has, what what that does, um, you know. And I think that's our first step. Uh, from there, uh, we'd be looking to, you know, have to look to get from the ninety thousand foot view, which is mm -hmm. this what we have now, to to get a little bit better. So that requires being able to go out there and do some modeling, uh, and do some studying of the drainage area and the separate uh, systems within that drainage area. Um, again, you know, funding for the, for that right now, I don't have anything uh, identified. I think once we get through this first step, you know, there are different options out there potentially uh, for funding. You know, so it's something that we'll be looking for, or potentially uh, APA funding or some other type of funding mm -hmm. could be used for that. Pick me; I'll put in the resolution. <laughs> um, so I imagine once you, once you deal with the swale, that's going to determine how large or small of a project the next step will be sure. and how much uh, the net, uh, um, how it'll pertain to the drainage Correct. because you'll know at that point what your level of flooding because is. Because this may need a level of cleaning and removal of debris. <laughs> we may find out that that resolves 80% of of any rainstorm, you don't know until you do it. Correct. It, it's right. very difficult. You can't go in and quantify the amount of backup that's happening. Right, until it's, it's gone. so irregular until it's gone. Mm -hmm. And then you visually can see, okay, there's nothing in the way. What 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 can pass? And then, then now you have a starting point of, okay, what do we need to fix from here to here now? So we so would anticipate you know, well before, or probably by spring, what the next step will be, getting this cleaned up, taking a look at it through the wet season. Yep. Um, it's difficult during the winter months. Mm -hmm. You know, ground gets frozen, water right. runs differently. Um, so by spring, we can analyze step two. how much of an improvement was made by, by cleaning this out. Now, yeah. is there a timeline on getting the swale cleaned out? Uh, yeah, so we were. I was talking with the contractor. We were supposed to be out there last week, but we had the issue on Brayton Ave uh, that we yep. kind of shifted. and. Uh, dealing with so uh, I'll be back in touch with him um, you know we were working with an LSP we'll make sure that they're clear and allow us to go into that area so uh, but I would hope within the next couple of weeks oh that'd be nice very nice sir would you like to state your name and address please uh, yes my name is Frank Casmero I live at 823 Grinnell Street in Fall River uh, sort of I agree with uh, Leo Councilor Leo Pelletier here about the building situation in our neighborhood. I've been there since 1972. Grinnell Street was only a paper street from like Reeve Street to this end, almost to Jefferson. It was paper street. That whole neighborhood that's developed in uh, houses there was wetland that they've built on and built up. You go up to the old Sylvia and Davis where they just developed all of that in there and the water table and that's on a hill compared to Jefferson and they had to make them slab houses because of the high water table. But that's not, that's putting more water. You've seen the pictures mm -hmm. in there. They're developing and hardscaping all the land around there. And then... <clears throat> They built Walmart, and I know they're saying that that's a different uh, watershed, but that's bringing all of that water on Jefferson Street into that same Chase Pond back in there that's elevated higher than Grinnell Street. So that's making no sense. And the, I talked to the, uh, I guess, I don't know if you're the city engineer. Or, yeah, the, yeah. the city engineer. I talked to... Uh, Mr. Perlin. Yeah, I am an Paul, engineer, but... Yeah. Yeah. I talked to Paul at the Neighborhood Association meeting, 
And he told me these maps were like, the piping system was 50 years since they, they put them in, and the map is like 15 years. So at the same time, we have this type of information going back this far, and we know it's antiquated, doesn't work, and the city still builds a dike on Jefferson Street. Now the mills used to have drive-throughs to them where water could escape. Now they're pushing it in the same place where Grinnell Street and 90 other acres are trying to drain into. And this is a city problem more so than anything else that I can see in that whole neighborhood. Would you like to address that? Yeah, well again, it's, <coughs> it's, it's development over time. Mm -hmm. um, again, we're dealing with drainage systems. This one's probably a little bit newer than maybe than some of the others, but like when we say new, we're still talking 50, 60 years ago so, you know, when something was done. And yes, all of these areas get, get built upon. And prior to 2015, there was no ordinance in place that forced people to take a hard look at drainage design. Um, that, that has all changed. So when someone comes in now to build a house on Grinnell Street, they go through a, for a single family house, a pretty stringent review process uh, to make sure that their stormwater is being handled correctly. Paul's office is the most difficult to get through. And, and it has been for a long time, but it's because he's doing his job by what the ordinance has given him the ability to do. Prior to, do, prior to that ordinance, he didn't have the ability to really put the clamps on a builder to say, you need to do this. And it's not just single family homes, it's, it's Walmart. Now again, Walmart do, does drain towards you know, the east and their drainage system is fairly elaborate to do that. But when you, when you look at everything as a whole, yes, the world is becoming impervious. So when I said you know, the new teeth that we could get through site plan review would give us the ability to require a certain amount of landscaping, certain amount of trees to be planted on sites, not just come in and we literally have some people that we chase that come in, build a house, and they concrete the entire lot. Yes. It's against zoning, so, we, so not, now the chase is on. You're not in compliance with zoning, you're not in compliance with site plan review. So it's, it's a constant struggle to chase these people. Um, but that, that's what some people do. So as much as you try to regulate it, there are going to be the few that fall through and just turn their blind eye to it. And then now, now the chase is on and we have to go through the legal process to, to have them remove things. It's not always, not always simple, that's mm -hmm. for sure. So site plan review, if the ordinance became a little bit beefier, we would have you know, the ability to do a little bit more. Talking of the <clears throat> bathtub, uh, that I heard about tonight about how the water drains and how in the world, if this map was in existence for 50, 50 years, do you not realize the sediment from Walmart that's about six, eight foot high on Jefferson Street is adequate to put that water in that location? That's beyond. Not to. I don't, want you, I, don't, I don't want you to think I'm being facetious because I'm not, but yeah. I think the same way they didn't think that when you drain a pond and build on it, the house is going to sink. True. Uh, that's the only way I can answer that. But the water is, the, the development was designed to go east, though, and, and not to suggest that there's not some coming off of it. Uh, you have uh, you have Cambridge uh, would, at Walmart. The drainage system does go yes yeah. to the east. But, but you have there is some small areas that shed down to the Jefferson Street. Okay. You have Cambridge Street running into that. You have Warren Street running. Oh, no, no, I, I recognize that. You have Jeff yeah. uh, Cookishan Street. You have Jefferson Street. Yeah. And if you go through there, sometime when it's nice and raining out, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Where the water is as over the sidewalk. Yeah, no, I, I, I know you talked about it. I, I thought you were talking Never about. was like that. When the mills were there, absolutely not like that. And if I can, Sean, so to, to go back to the, the rainfall intensity, how many times in anyone's lives here have you seen Route 195 closed? How many times? Yeah, never. Twice this year? Yeah. Twice this year, yeah. Right. But prior but to before that. that no. So, right. we're, so we, we have an entirely different starting point. I sit home and I watch the news and I see, I have a daughter that goes to school in Providence and I'm like, I can't believe this kid's gonna drive through a foot of water or sit in traffic because 195 is closed. And you see it everywhere. You see highway ramps, you see Route 140, you see Route 24. Miles of quick. street backed up. And when I say this isn't just a city of Fall River situation, this is everywhere. So, and I understand this 
this flooding is an inconvenience. We are working to resolve it. But it's, in all honesty, it, you can't just blame it all on the past negligence of what the city has allowed to go on. You can't. You have, you have to look at the science and what's happening rainfall-wise because it's happening on interstate highway level that go through the most intense drainage design and, and, and try to handle everything they can. So when a highway floods, you're gonna, you have to expect that that Quickashan Street is going to flood as well. When you have five acres with weepy willow trees on them, cattails, uh, I don't know, eel grass, you would call it, and you take that and you rip it all out and yep. you build it three feet higher is really intelligent because weepy willow trees do not grow unless there's deep water under them. No, I, I, so your house was probably... Uh, and, and My house is 100 well years old. Uh, and, and most of these. Prop so the Well and Protection Act has, was only in effect since 1974. Before that, you could build anywhere. So many of these homes in these neighborhoods were built prior to 1974, when there was no Wetlands Protection Act or no drainage design. Incorrect. Okay. All right, well, They're we sitting don't right up there. Everybody's sitting there. And we've had FEMA come down in our neighborhoods and give money to people. This is how much property that has been lost. FEMA has been in that neighborhood a couple of times in the last, I'd say, 15 years. Okay, well, this is the first time that we've been able to address the problem and address the issue that all of you are facing. These gentlemen are telling us that there is something that can be done. There's an immediate, something immediate that can be done. They're saying it's going to have an impact. It's going to improve your situation. I would like to be able to give them the opportunity to move forward with this and let us see to what extent this initial uh, help will, will bring and what we have to do next to alleviate your problems so you don't have to deal with this anymore. That's appreciated, and I'm sure everybody else will appreciate it too, but it's something through the years, every lot of my neighbors, including myself, have been in front of the uh, city council at the uh, citizens' input and has gone nowhere. We've talked to different people who are running for office, who come through the neighborhood and say they will address things, Just has gone nowhere. Excuse me, sir. So were the three of us on this committee then? I'm not sure who was on I didn't follow committees. I know I wasn't. I, I, don't, I didn't follow committees, yeah. so I didn't know who to address, how to go about yeah. it. This is, and that's why I went to the Neighborhood Association. We got the people yeah. together mm -hmm. and try to go and to, I guess, Paul's credit, he told us to move on this. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's, I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna say this, I suppose. So that was the past. I'm sorry for anybody who failed you in the past. We're here now. We're determined to rectify things, to get done what can be done to help people. I know Councilor Pelletier, Councilor Dean, myself, we advocate for the residents and taxpayers all the time, and I won't let this go. Thank you much. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Just... So, uh, Council yeah. Kadeem? No, so, so I will say that I'm not agreeing with all the arguments, but I think what we can all agree on, um, as we had mentioned, is that the infrastructure and the improvements have been a long time coming, and we've just put it to the wayside, right? So I think we've all been trying to advocate for these improvements, and you can see that tonight with all these conversations. I think it comes down to to the funding options um, and obviously taking the votes to make sure that there's funding ap appropriated for this. So I think moving forward, we, we need to be cognizant of that. Um, I know we've been pushing the administration to, to come up with planning, uh, but I guess before he, uh, this gentleman leaves, um, I, I apologize, I forgot your, your name. Frank. 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 Uh, before Frank leaves, we had talked about the 90 foot uh, scope. How much do you think you need for this, this project? To get down to the next level, so to start a feasibility study and get down to the next level, I would say that would probably be 300000 Okay. would be my estimate. So can I just make a motion that uh, the Committee uh, on Public Works sends a letter requesting uh, an appropriation order from the administration of $300,000 for a feasibility study for this, for this area? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Can I vote? <laughs> 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 Councilor Pelletier? Yeah, I'd just like to say, yeah, 
uh, it was on a slow track, and I think with these two guys and us, it, he's going to see it on a fast track. The best we could do with the money he can get, and I, I think we're moving along fairly better than we done in the past. So it's a lot better than I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you yeah. for coming. Uh, do we have a motion on this above beyond the funding? Your turn. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, so, so I, I do just want to make, I guess, a, a, a comment in general. Um, so I, I think the last, I don't know, one, two, three, four, four items that we've been talking about have been sewer-related items, right? So I just want to give this, you know, shameless plug about the support of the water and sewer department, and obviously the only way to fund this, if it's coming through the enterprise funds, is the rates associated with that, right? So I think, you know, my colleagues just need to be cognizant of the fact that this is, you know, going to have an impact on, you know, stormwater rates, water rates, but it's much needed, as we can see, because this has been ignored for quite some time. I think we got to get to the to the point where we have the planning. Uh, utilizing, you know, additional monies through grant monies, and I think you do a phenomenal job of whether it's advocating for APA. Thank you for your attention. You're welcome. Thank you. Whether it's whether it's APA money or, or grant money to leverage so that we're not just you know going always to the taxpayer and the in the ratepayers. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. So I, I just wanna I wanna just you know, make sure everybody understands that and just urge my colleagues to remember that when we go forward with budgets yeah, in, in thank, the future. So. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, just to, you know, I am, I try to seek out every single grant opportunity possible so we don't have to uh, affect the rate payers. Um, but everything does come down to Money. the rates when it comes back to it. So uh, there is no other funding for water or sewer, so. Okay. I yield. Council Peltier? I'd just like to say, you probably know, I always supported the water rates to go up to make sure that we take care of everything. And my famous uh, quote would be, without water, the city is nothing. And you got Flint, Michigan, you got the hurricanes, they got no water, they don't have anything. And we started uh, 23, 24 years ago uh, with the project, the, the, the water lines and everything else. Not too many have done that, but I think we're in good shape, and we just got to support uh, uh, for the money that they need to do uh, the work, and, and that's the way it goes. I am. Thank you. My contribution was trying to offset the increase in water rates. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that, that I comment, tried very that, hard that to do that. You know, that comment wasn't directed <laughs> to you, but. but uh, uh, so do we have a motion? Mo motion to table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose. Uh, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm here for the next one, too. Okay. Uh, next one? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Furlan. Uh, number seven, resolution. Committee on Public Works and Transportation convened to discuss ways to keep residents informed of daily closures. Do you want me to read the resolution? Whereas there is currently a good deal of road construction causing many streets to be temporarily closed, whereas these closures cause traffic delays for residents commuting to school and work, now therefore be it resolved that the Committee on Public Transportation convened to discuss ways to keep residents informed of daily street closures. Council Kadeen. Uh, so I, I would think that this is pretty easy to do, right? So dispatch gets notified of all the street closures, yes. shares it with police, fire. We so can just get it online. So if you see the date on this is April. Um, so since since Charlie and I's involvement in this, which is about April-ish, yep. um, we've worked closely with Thank you. the different departments, the different contractors doing work in the city. That's the majority of it is a little bit of utilities. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had monthly, sometimes biweekly meetings with them. Uh, they send us every day or two an update of their street list, what streets will be closing. Same thing for our city projects, LAL construction, Century, anything that's going on construction-wise in the city, all now gets funneled through the mayor's office, through Ann's office, mm -hmm. gets sent through IT, and gets posted on the city's website, Facebook, Instagram, and report gets sent to WSAR. You can hear it every morning when, you, when you're driving into work. They rattle through all of the streets. I don't listen to WSAR. They just yes, kick me off on WSAR. <laughs> I don't either anymore. <laughs> as long as it's not election season, you'll be fine. Um, so I know, I know the amount of work that's gone into this from 
everybody in a thousand direction and it gets funneled through one place so that it can be disseminated in a bunch of other places to let the people know. I know for the first month or two that I started, the calls that came in every day, and mostly had to do with Liberty Utilities, because when spring hit, mm -hmm. they were wild. They were wild every day. I can't get down my street, I can't do this. We've had meetings, police chief involved, fire chief, uh, deputy chief, uh, Castro. We all sit in with Liberty yeah. Utilities, and it is, it is a session about you guys need to do better with your road detour signs, with your police details, fighting with, with, with the police department and the unions of making sure details are being filled. And all. There, have been, there has been so much involved in this street construction stuff, mostly triggered because of Liberty. You know, if, if Liberty was done with gas work, you would probably see 10% of the construction going on. But they, they have to fix what they have to fix. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to do the best we can with that. So as far as the notification stuff goes, I think there's been drastic improvement from what it was prior to, uh, to April. Not to say that there can't be more places that we can send it to, um, but, but I think they've done a pretty good job. And I can say that the complaints have decreased by about 90%. Well, that's good to yeah. hear. The, the biggest complaint we get now is when Liberty leaves either materials, pipe, equipment, or trucks on a street over the weekend. And so over the winter, I would like to discuss potentially maybe some other ordinances about how we can rein in some of the construction activities and what is left, what, what is left behind. Um, it's convenient for them, but not convenient for the homeowners. So construction season's wrapping up within the next few weeks uh, and then we'll we're going to revisit potentially how we handle next year with with their onslaught of, nice. of work so yeah. I, I think the mayor's office has done well and Anne was Anne is really she takes the reins of of this mm -hmm. and she wants to know what are we doing every street and if it's if something goes over overlaps a day and it's not on the list and she drives by She's calling and she wants to know, why wasn't it on the list again? Well, we had two hours of work to finish. Well, please, you have to let us know so that we can update the list. Worst thing that someone can do is say, my street's closed, it's not on any list. So we, we try to make sure that that is not you know, the normal situation. Not to mention, sometimes it interferes with trash pickup as well. Oh, it, that, that, That's like... Trash pickup, <laughs> now that I drive through the city more often, I can't, I can't believe how often I'm stuck behind a trash truck driving down a street that's got cars parked on each side and they have to pick up trash from the travel lane with cars behind them. There is no room for them to, to nope. pull over. Uh, but I'm not involved in trash <laughs> collection. But, so yeah. if you want to talk to Charlie about that, yeah. he can stay And um, I, I know the city administrator is still here. My, I have a question on the new website, which we can advertise street closures on as well. we'll hopefully we'll be online when? <laughs> Well, actually, uh, don't push Kasha, him because any pushes um, me. <laughs> I met with IT today, and we have uh, street closures on the website. So you can have the ability now, right? Yeah, we have it now. Uh, this morning, I met with them, and on the if you when you open up the website, right on the front page, it's on there. It's as of today, and if you go to the uh, streets and highways under the uh, DCM mm -hmm. streets and highways and road work. It's now linked to that also. So once you hit the city website now, uh, uh, recent uh, hot topics right in there. Mm -hmm. You had to search for it before. Yeah, right. you had to now search. It's now there's a link right away. Yeah. Yeah. Now okay. you had to search for it originally, but now they've linked it right up. So as soon as you go on, uh, street closures right there. And we know how easy that website yeah. was to navigate and search for things. Yeah. Well, this one's easy. So now it's <laughs> you know. uh, the new web, uh, the new. Website. City website? When's it going live? When's it going live? Um, I would say early next year. Okay. Well, as long as we've made it easier and people only have to turn on their computer, go to City of Fall River, and it's right there, there that, that, that's another big help. So. Yeah, it has been on there for a while, but they changed the location to make it even easier. It's a that's wonderful Charlie thing. Said. Something important, and, and Seth not going to probably let you know, but in the process of working towards the new website, and, and he explained this to me, is we're actually making improvements to the site as it exists now. So when everything moves over, it moves over once. So you're, you're going to see drastic improvement probably in, in some of the existing website as well, just like something like yeah. this, as we're, 
we're charged with reviewing all of our pages. How can we make it work better? And what, so as time goes on, we'll, we'll be implementing be some of those changes. Over. You know, you'll, you'll see changes as it goes on. There, there was so much uh, antiquated information and links that went nowhere. So Seth's mm -hmm. office has had us start cleaning all of those up, putting together lists, and so IT is going through and trying to clean up the existing before. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to migrate junk. Right, so hopefully right. what you have is a solid core that can migrate over. So the city council might be listed under government instead of a department before the new website comes on? Well, so structurally, it probably there won't be those changes. So right. the structural changes are, are a little more challenging just because it has to do with the architecture of the site. In terms of the currency of the information, that should improve. Yeah. So mm -hmm. small victories. Okay. Council Valtier? Yeah. You know, we get a notification in our packages. I do because mm -hmm. I don't do email but this one's dated uh, October 28th, and uh, Ferrer Construction, they got 12 street closures on this. And, uh, you know, you can call this, but I guess it's easier with IT now. But uh, we get the information. So we just got to make sure. We're not sure worried about you getting the information. It's the rest of the city. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> at, at least they're doing something. Here. We have it. We have it. And it comes in. Whenever they go. Well, what they've done is, so on, on the link that comes from Ferrara and Liberty, yeah. if you look at the the uh, the list of who it goes to, I think everybody I think everybody in the city probably gets it yeah. directly. Yeah. But that there's really only one name that matters, and that's the mayor's office, so that Ann can take that information and put it on the different the different sites that we have it on. Gotcha. I get them I get four of them from four different departments. I get the one from planning, I get the one from engineering, I get, I get them from everywhere. So I, I delete three emails and open one. Yeah, so yep. share it. Share <laughs> it. No, I don't need to share it. Motion well, grant leave to withdraw? What was it? Grant leave to withdraw. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, thank That's you, it. gentlemen. Thank you all very much. Thank you for spending so much time with us tonight. <laughs> Motion to approve the minutes? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion adjourned. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Committee on Public Works and Transportation has convened. Nice job.